بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنك لا تنادي فهم يا بني قومي رسودا أعيد للدنا Many Muslims claim that God revealed scientific facts in the Quran long before modern science discovered them. Here are the main ones. Number one, the Quran describes the fertilization process and embryonic growth before it was known about. This is false. The writings of Aristotle, Hippocrates, Galen and others describes these things long before the Quran. The point to be noted, just because someone says something which are matching with the Quran, that doesn't mean that Quran has been copied from that. Suppose I make a statement, suppose if I make a statement which is correct, which was said by somebody else earlier, that doesn't mean I have copied. It may be, it may not be. To use the conflict approach with the Quran, yes, he copied. Okay, fine. But let's analyze. The Quran doesn't take the things which were wrong from Hippocrates. If you would have copied, you would have copied everything. It is logical, unless he is a scientist, okay this is correct, oh this is wrong, I won't copy that, this is correct, I'll copy that. All the stages of Hippocrates and Galen is not the same as the Quran. Hippocrates and Galen doesn't speak about leech like substance, they don't speak about mudga at all. Where do they speak? Hippocrates and Galen at that time they said that even the women have got semen. Who says that? Even the Bible says that. If you read in the Bible, it mentions in Leviticus chapter number 12, verse number 1 to 2, that women give out seed. So actually, Bible is copying from Hippocrates. And Bible says in Job, Bible says in Job chapter number 10, verse number 9 and 10, that we have made the human beings from clay, like poured out milk and curdled cheese. Poured out milk and curdled cheese is exact plagiarization from Hippocrates. Why plagiarization? Because surely that's not the word of God. That portion is unscientific. It was said by Hippocrates and Galen, the Greeks, that human beings are created like curdled cheese. And Bible copies that exactly. But Quran, Alhamdulillah, as if you analyze and read the books of embryology, even of Dr. Keith Moore, he said that Hippocrates and the other people like Galen, etc., they did give a lot of things to embryology initially, as well as Aristotle. Many were right, many were wrong. And further he goes to say, in the Middle Ages, or at the time of the Arabs, the Quran speaks about something additional. If it was exactly copied, why would Dr. Keith Moore in his book give due credit to the Quran? He even gives due credit to Aristotle, to Hippocrates, but mentions there, many were wrong. That he doesn't mention with the Quran. That is enough proof that Quran wasn't copied from the Greek. Professor Keith Moore is one of the world's prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human. Which has been translated into eight languages. The book is considered a scientific reference work and was chosen by the Special Committee in the United States as the best book authorized by one person. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. From God, from God, from God, from God, from God. Obviously, uh, life begins at the moment of fertilization when a single sperm fuses with an ovum to form a one celled embryo or zygote. At this moment, the ultimate character of that indi new individual is decided. The Quran recorded these facts 1400 years ago. Al Harth, uh, Surah Al Bagheera, Ayah 223. Your wives are as a tilth unto you. This Arabic term refers to the plowing of the earth and the sowing of the seed in it. 
This term is used in reference to sexual intercourse, plowing, and implantation of the blastocyst, sowing of the seed. This analogy is a very good one since the blastocyst develops root-like structures called chorionic villi, which derive oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood, just as the roots of the plant shown here uh, derive their nutrients from the soil. Next uh, is Alica. Let's have the next slide. Alica is uh, Sura al Muminum Aya 14. Then we created the drop into a leech like structure. Then, of that leech like structure, we made a chewed like substance. Uh, Alica refers to a leech like appearance, especially at about 22 days, as shown in this slide. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo about 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing and that it is truly, the human embryo is truly leech-like. The leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac which is embedded in the maternal blood and attached to the maternal endometrium or the lining of the uterus. Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. The Quran on Embryology Dr. T. V. N. Persaud Dr. T. V. N. Persaud is Professor of Anatomy, Professor of Pediatrics and Child Health, and Professor of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences, at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. There he was the chairman of the Department of Anatomy for 16 years. He is well known in his field. He is the author or editor of 22 textbooks and has published over 180 scientific papers. In 1991, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCEB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. Dr. Persaud is the penultimate speaker that you are about to hear, saying what he has to say about how science is in total conformity with what was revealed in the Quran 1430 years ago to a man who was illiterate and lived at a time when it was impossible for him to know anything of the complexities of what you have so far heard. Dr. Persaud will be discussing issues pertaining to ladies and how the Qur'an succinctly and correctly stated scientific facts impossible for anyone to have known at that time. He further states facts and figures pertaining to the current sexual promiscuity and the health-related problems due to this. What is amazing is how this was clearly stated by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, long before any of these facts were known to the medical world. Let's now listen to what Dr. T. V. M. Persaud has to say on these amazing issues. The growth of the fetus progresses rapidly until the beginning of the twelfth week, after which it enters a new phase of rapid growth and dramatic changes. The rapid growth and dramatic changes which occur after the bones have been clothed by muscles have been mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago and this is recorded this is the Surah Al-Muminum Ayah 14. The first slide is a scanning electron micrograph of an embryo that is just five weeks old. The embryo as you will see is curled. It is no more than a half an inch in length and the upper part forms two-thirds of the entire body. There is a limb bud there, and there is in fact a tail. The heart is in its very primitive stage, but it's in fact beating rhythmically. And this is a special technique which is used for clearing. That some of the information we have seen based on the Quran were not known to us until the discovery 
of electronic microscopes, not just the microscopes of the 17th century, electronic microscopes. And to speculate that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, must have learned that from someone else or discovered it is tantamount to assuming that somewhere in the desert of Mecca, under one of the tents, the Prophet ﷺ was hiding an electronic microscope and nobody was able to discover that at all. None. Not his wife, his family or closest friends. There must be only one logical and scientifically sound answer, not theological. That this Quran indeed could have not emanated from any source other than the Creator who knew what we will discover from Tina.